gas heat explained. Do you know how to work on a gas furnace? Do you know how to work on a gas package unit? Do you know the various components, the sequence of operation, and what to check? Today we're going to go over different scenarios, like if this doesn't work, then check this. If this doesn't work, check this. And I'm going to explain to you what is required for a gas heat unit to work. So that if you are a service technician or you want to be a service technician, and it's winter and it's gas heating season, you know what to do. Today you're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. This unit's not working right now, so we're gonna diagnose the problem. I think it's a gas valve, so I went to the scrap yard and I pulled this off a carrier unit because this man right here is going through some hard times. Right now he's very sick, and we're gonna do this job for free today. So I've got a gas valve, so I don't have to charge him for the part. If that's what it is, I think that's what it may be. I'm also training someone today, so that's the reason I'm doing this video. I want him to be able to go back to this video and have this for a reference, have this for some studying later on if he needs it. So that's the reason I'm doing this video. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the components. And then we're gonna talk about what's needed for this gas unit to work, which is pretty simple. We need fuel, which we're using propane gas. So we gotta have a propane tank that's filled up with propane and we need spark. And then there's some other things that we need, like we need some components to make it work. But you have to have fuel, okay? And you have to have spark, or you have to have fire. So hot surface igniter, spark igniter. Keep that in mind. Let's look at the unit, and go over the design and the components. So the first thing we got is a gas line, right? We got a gas line, and there's a shut off. There's supposed to be a shut off in the gas line. And this gas line, the gas line leads back to a propane tank. Propane tank is right there. So you want to check and make sure there's propane in the tank. So into the unit, we've got a gas valve. You can't really see it, it's kind of hard to see it, but there's two wires that go to the gas valve and they provide 24 volts whenever there's a call to the gas valve. Then when we leave the gas valve, we have a manifold pipe, right? That manifold pipe contains our orifices. One, two, three, four, five. There are five orifices. And then after the orifices, we have our burners, okay? And the burners are lined up together and they have a track, right? And it's a flame carryover track. We have the gas that goes through here and then we have a spark igniter, right? Spark igniter sparks and it's got two pieces of metal and there's a spark in between it. And whenever the gas hits the first spark, then it lights that burner, okay? So it lights this burner first and then it travels all the way to the end, right? And then this wire right here, we've got a flame sensor, and that's a rod. And flame rectification happens. And what is that? It's where we have a signal that's sent back through the ground to the board. And that lets the board know that, hey, the flame's lit. So now you can turn on the blower if you want. We also have safeties. You see these wires right here? This is a rollout switch. It's manual reset, so there's a push button. Whenever the flame rolls out because, well, our heat exchanger is busted, or we have some other problem like gas pressure problem, this rollout switch will pop open. What does that do? It keeps the flame from staying lit. That way we don't damage something. Because if the flame's rolling out, we've got flames in this area, and they could burn the wires, or it could catch the unit on fire. We don't need that, so we got a rollout switch, right? If the rollout switch pops open, you may need to check the heat exchanger. I'll show you on this unit how to check the heat exchanger. This right here is the uh, pressure switch, right? Pressure switch stays open until there is a, uh, a vacuum. There is a negative pressure pull. Sometimes pressure switches can be uh, closed by a positive pressure. This one's negative. How do you know? You can look at it, right? It says right here, uh, 0.33. So whenever the inducer motor comes on, it should close the pressure switch. And we're gonna talk about sequence of operation and what happens first, but I'm just going over components. So this is the inducer motor. Uh, whenever it, it's provided power, which some inducer motors are 230 volts, some are 115 volt. This one's a package unit, so it's provided 230 volts to this package unit. Inducer motor comes on, pressure switch closes. What's the next thing, next thing that happens? The next thing that happens is we have a uh, spark and our gas valve is energized. Now, there's one more component which you can't see here 
and that is a limit switch, okay? So let's go over to the other side of the unit. On the other side of this unit, you've got the blower motor, right? And right here, you've got your limit switch. And what does a limit switch do? A limit switch opens when there is a high temperature because it's called a high limit switch, right? So whenever the limit switch opens, it energizes the blower and the blower stays on. Why? Because we have a high uh, temperature situation. So what can cause a high temperature situation? Maybe our ductwork is collapsed because it's flex. Maybe our filter is dirty. Uh, maybe we have low airflow because our coil is uh, dirty and we're not allowing enough airflow to flow through. Maybe our blower motor, there's something wrong with our blower motor. So a high limit switch is very important. And you can actually take the high limit switch off. You can look at it and there's a certain rating for opening that limit switch. Maybe it opens at 175 degrees or 150 degrees. And then it closes back at 70 degrees or 50 degrees. So different types of high limit switches. Uh, know that. Uh, let's keep going over the, the sequence of operations and then we're going to start diagnosing this equipment. Also, if you want to look at the heat exchanger, you can take the blower motor out to look at the heat exchanger on this unit. So that's a good way to look at the heat exchanger. Now we're going to give this a call for heating. How do we do that? We put the red and the white wire together. By the way, I've never worked on this unit, so I don't know who left that capacitor uh, not uh, strapped in, but that's not good practice. So now let's give it a call. Let's see what happens. Turn the gas valve on. All right. Inducer motor comes on first. Pressure switch closes. Then we get a spark, make sure the, the gas valve is on, there's our spark, now it should light, it did not light, so what do we do? We check and make sure that the gas valve is getting power, we check and make sure that we have gas, okay? Alright, let's go to this next step. First thing I'm going to do is make sure that the tank is full and make sure that the valve is open, right? And something you want to do is you want to make sure that there's no wasp in here. If there is, you may need to get some wasp spray, so be very careful when opening this up. <laughs> All right, so this is why you got to be careful. Look at that. Man. Look at that. All right, I'm going to get some wasp spray, and then I'll come back here in a second. If you don't have wasp spray, WD-40 works great. Now, is the tank full? Yes, it is completely full. Is this open? Yes, it's all the way open. We got gas going to the unit. We're going to turn the shut off off, okay? And we're going to measure the inlet pressure of the gas valve. So. We're gonna take the inlet screw loose and we're gonna use our manometer and hook up the manometer. The reason you wanna turn the gas valve off is because while you're opening the inlet screw, it's gonna be pouring gas out. You don't want that. Shut it off, open the inlet screw, attach your manometer, and then, shut, uh, and then turn the gas valve back on. Got the tube hooked up to the inlet port of the gas valve. We've got the manometer hooked up and it's zeroed out. There's a link if you wanna buy this down in the description. This is what I use and it's called the dual port manometer and pressure switch tester. It's the field piece SDMN6. So now we just turn the gas back on and we've got 10 coming in. So really we want a minimum of, I would say at least 10 because how do we have 10 for the manifold pressure if we don't have 10 coming in? So make sure you have at least what you need on the outlet coming in on the inlet if that makes sense because propane the gas pressure for the manifold pressure needs to be set for 10. So if you want to increase pressure you come to wherever the regulator is I'll show you how to increase the pressure. You can get a flathead screwdriver you switch hands and we can come right here and we can turn this okay you see now it's 10.3. I'd like to have 11. So we're going to keep turning that clockwise. 10.6. All right. All right. 
There's 11. Yeah, that's good for me. I like 11. Now, we got pressure coming in. So we're going to take this off. We're going to go ahead and put our meter, uh, our tube on the outlet port, which is right there. And we're going to check the pressure while the unit is running. So let's go ahead and turn this back off and take, take our tube out. Remember to always, always tighten the inlet and the outlet screw when you're done. So we're going to go right here. Whoop. Whoops. There's the outlet screw. You can see I've loosened it up. So now I'm going to put my tube on there, zeroed out the manometer. So you can see that there. What? Hold on a second. Just put the tube on, right? And I've got pressure. Shut off's off. I mean on. So that means that the gas valve is it's letting the, the gas go through it. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, make sure the gas valve's on. I'm gonna go ahead and provide a call and let's see what happens. You can see I've got gas pressure even when my gas valve is supposed to be closed because there's no call. Now, whenever it sparks, this should go up. But it's not doing anything, you can see that. Now, let's make sure the gas valve has power. So let's get our meter. Meter on volts AC. I've got 15 volts with no call right there see that and when it calls i got 28 right so we got voltage to the gas valve but the gas valve's not opening but we've got gas pressure on the outlet side which we shouldn't have so obviously the gas valve is bad and i'll tell you something that can cause a gas valve to go bad over pressuring the gas valve say a company came out here to do a pressure test before they hooked up the gas line for the propane. And they took and didn't cap off right here. And then they put uh, air pressure on the gas line and they put it on the gas valve. And then they blew up the gas valve basically, or uh, they caused the diaphragm to fail in the gas valve. So that could have happened. We obviously have a bad gas valve. So what are we gonna do? We're going to take this gas valve that I pulled off the carrier unit this morning. Uh, if you didn't see my little short video on why you should save parts, uh, I did a video. I'll post it in the link in the description so you can go check it out. I like to save used parts. Why? Because you have situations where you have somebody that maybe can't afford a part or is going through a rough time and you're able to help them out. So one thing we'll have to do is we'll have to take this cap off and we'll have to take the a spring out of the old gas valve and we'll have to transfer that one into this one because natural gas and propane you have different springs uh, that apply you know different tension and allow a different pressure uh, if you don't know how to install a propane conversion kit or anything about that I've got a video on that I did about a couple weeks ago I'll put that in the link in the description for you so first things first I got to get this gas valve off of this manifold pipe this right here is where you find a part to save somebody some money. Especially somebody who's going through a rough time. Here's a gas valve. All right. The thing I want to clarify is you should not have gas pressure on the outlet side of the gas valve. Only when the gas valve is energized and it opens should you have gas flowing through this side of the gas valve and to the burners and through the orifices. You should have gas pressure on the inlet side, okay? So, but we had gas pressure on the outlet with no call to the gas valve. So we obviously have a uh, gas valve that's bad. I'm gonna plug that wire back up. Just wanna clarify for you, okay? Oh, that's on there. Okay, best way to do this, put one, yeah. Monkey wrench on the ground. Ugh. All right. Ugh. Ugh. All right. 
old gas valve is off. Make sure you have some type of pipe thread sealant. I'm using the Rector Seal and I'm using the Blue Monster thread tape. So either one of these you can use. Works great now that we've got the old gas valve off. We want to take and see, looks like it was set up for natural gas. There's no propane sticker. So, I'm gonna take this off, take this adjustment screw out. I'm so glad that nobody rounded these screws out. Come on, buddy. Get out of there. You can do it. You can do it. Get out of there before I smack one. Get your face. Get out of there. All right. You guys are about to see something on camera. <laughs> uh, let me know if you've ever done that. I am the Billy Madison of HVAC. All right, use a tool to get it out. All right, let me know if there's a better way to get this out besides throwing it in the woods. Now there's my spring. See that beautiful spring? Now we're gonna take the spring out of the other gas valve and we're gonna go ahead and take the other gas valve out. How do we do that? There's a union, thankfully. Unions are so you can take a piece of pipe, a couple pieces of pipe loose. All right, first thing we're gonna do, shut the gas off. Second thing we're gonna do is take the union loose, All right? take all the gas pipe that's leading up to our gas valve loose. That's the only way we're going to get that gas valve out. Slide this panel off. Yeah. Get that out of the way. Now there's our gas valve. So easiest way to get this out is to take these four screws. I'm glad I'm taking this off so I can show you a few things. One is look at that. Look at that. This is the reason you need a drip leg. Look at all that. This is what was inside. So this is not good. Wow, that is not good. So maintenance. Maintenance is super important. There's a few things that you want to maintenance uh, every year when you go work on a furnace or a package unit. Spiders will build cobwebs in orifices. It'll cause one burner to light and then the other burner won't light. So to take these out, you use a crescent wrench, you take them out, and then if you got an Allen tool small enough or a meter lead, micro lead, you can put it through that hole and clean out those cobwebs. Another thing that needs to be maintained is burners. You may need to use some sandpaper on some burners. You may need to clean a flame sensor. You may need to clean an igniter. So. Cleaning the burners every year is good maintenance. Also pressure switch. Pressure switch tubes or the port that the tube hooks on. If the pressure switch is not closing, check that tube. 
because it could be stopped up with some rust. This gas valve is definitely bad. It had a lot of crud inside of it. We're going to take it off, but first we're going to take that spring out. So let's do that. All right, taking the cap for the adjustment screw off. not to round it out now take this thing out there's our spring tip this over now take a look at the spring for propane versus the spring that was for natural gas can you see a difference whoops got them all tangled up there all right you see, this one's going to be more pressure, right? So what we're going to do is take the gas valve that's hopefully good, put the propane spring inside, take the adjustment screw, put it inside, and go ahead and screw it down. All right. There we go. Now, we're going to take this gas valve and put it where this gas valve is. Got the old gas valve off of this manifold something I want to show you about the new gas valve is the Allen tools and the location of the ports for measuring the inlet and the outlet or inlet and outlet are a little bit different you see this one this one's the outlet all right and that one's the inlet okay so you want to make sure that you have a couple different Allen tools sizes and then you also want to make sure you have a different size tube for your manometer and this bar fitting, okay? Threaded on one side, barbed on the other. We already know what the uh, inlet is, so we don't have to measure it, but we, we don't know what the outlet's set to on the new gas valve. So I'm going ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on so that it's easier for me uh, to get to it now than it is to put it in and all that. All right, so. I'm going to use some of this pipe thread sealant. Oh my. Apple of my eye. This is looking terrible. Oh, I just flicked some in my eyeball. That's beautiful. So, you want to make sure you get a generous amount on here. So, and you can use either one you know either one you can use this one if you want you know I, I recommend if you do use this which I'll show you how you want to go around at least three times see that so either one whatever you want to do all right now make sure you know what's the out and what's the in Okay, this says outlet, and usually there's an arrow, gas flow, see? Gas flow, it flows in and then it goes out. So you want the outlet right here. All right, yes, yes. We're gonna have this man's heat fixed. Oh, by the way, I wouldn't have to worry about those wasps or yellow jackets or whatever they were if it was cold, but it's not cold right now. It's 80 degrees outside, but it feels wonderful. I'm so happy. It's fall. All right, I'm going to get this tightened up, get it back in, and then we'll check gas pressure. Taking the union apart, make sure you always put pipe thread sealant on every connection that you take off. We do not want this man to run out of propane because we left a leak. Make sure you have soap bubbles. When you turn the gas back on, you soap test every connection. We do not want something catastrophic to happen, something dangerous to happen. We gotta make sure that we check every connection. You got a new union on. You wanna make sure that you spray all the connections. We had to turn the tank off because found the leak right here. But you wanna spray all the connections. Got the manometer hooked up to that port back there. And what we're going to do is, we're going to go ahead and give it a call. All right. Let's see what we get. 
do it. Got the adjustment screw right here. Looks like we got four. And we got the burners lit. Need to increase the pressure. Almost there. Propane needs to be set for 10. And there it is. She's burning. Awesome. The barb fitting out of the outlet port. I'm going to show you a tool you need to have. This is a service valve wrench. And to put this screw back in, in tight places, this tool can be used and it's perfect. So what I do is I actually take out the end piece right here. See this now get it started now I can finish tightening it up there we go now that we got the unit running I'm gonna go over what to check and talk about various problems if you have this happen check this so if your inducer motor is not coming on check and make sure that there's nothing in the housing by taking the screws off uh, that mount the inducer motor to the uh, flue box or the flue cover. Take it off and take a look at the wheel. There may be a dirt dauber nest in there. Uh, check and make sure that there's power. Use your meter leads, check the two uh, power wires that go to the inducer motor or the two terminals and check to see if it's got power. If it doesn't have power, it could be a bad control board. If your inducer motor is coming on but nothing is sparking, check your pressure switch. Make sure your pressure switch is closed. How do you do that? Uh, you can take your uh, uh, meter lead, put one to the ground, and then check one to each terminal and see if it's got 24 volts across the switch. If it's got 24 volts coming in but not 24 volts going out, pressure switch is not closing. If it's not closing, take the tube off, all right? And then see if there's something stuck inside the port something is stuck inside the tube. Sometimes rust will accumulate in this port. Sometimes ants will get inside this tube. So that'll keep the pressure switch from closing. If your pressure switch is closed, but there's no spark, make sure that your spark igniter is plugged up. Your spark igniter is plugged in from the board and it goes to the igniter. Make sure the igniter is not dirty. So if it's plugged into the board and it's not sparking, the board could be bad. Uh, if it is sparking, and it's not lighting, check the gas pressure. Make sure there's gas going in, make sure that the gas valve is getting power, and make sure there's gas going out to the actual burners. If it's still not lighting, take the orifices off. Check the orifices, make sure they're not stopped up. If you have the first burner lighting but not the second burner, take the burners off. Clean it with some sandpaper, clean it with a brush, a steel brush, and make sure you get all that rust off there. That way your carryover track is clean for your burners. It could also be that the orifices are stopped up, and that's the reason the flame is not traveling, or one burner is lighting and another burner is not lighting. If your, if your burners are all lighting, right, and it's going all the way to the end, but it doesn't stay lit, it goes back out, check your flame sensor. Look how dirty this flame sensor is. Look at that. We are not going to leave this man with dirty burners or a flame sensor, so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to take this sandpaper. Now, there's people that say, don't use sandpaper, use a cloth. I'm going to use sandpaper. I'll use whatever I want. So, there we go. Flame sensor is clean. If your uh, flame is still going out and your flame sensor is bad, make a flame rod out of some copper wire, like a number 10 wire. Connect this spade to that piece of copper wire if you don't know how to make a flame rod. I will put a link to a video that I did so that you can learn on how to make a flame rod and use it and test a flame sensor. I've also got a video on how to check gas pressure. I've also got a video on how to check a pressure switch. I'll put all those videos down below so you can learn more. Now, if your flame is still going, if your uh, gas is still going out and it's still shutting down and you don't have any air inside, check your blower motor. Check your power to your blower motor. If uh, it's shutting off, but your blower's running, check your limit switch. It could be that your supply vents are closed, 
Some people have vents closed in the house. Maybe the ductwork's too small. I've had new units that were put in, but uh, the people didn't check the ductwork uh, that put it in, and their duct was too small. So the unit was never going to work. Uh, it could be fan speed. Uh, this is, this is, these are just a few things that may be able to help you while you're in the field as a technician, as someone who's trying to learn about gas heat. Had to put the strap on that capacitor. Can't leave it that way. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you know more about troubleshooting, sequence of operation, and the components, and what's required for this gas heating system to work. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. I am privileged to be able to help somebody else. Homeowner came out, I explained to them there's no charge, and they said, God bless you, and it's amazing the feeling you get from helping somebody. If you want to feel good right now, you're feeling depressed, you're upset, uh, go help somebody because that's really going to add it's going to add happiness to you. And that's what you need in life because happiness makes life better. So let me know if you've ever had the opportunity to help somebody uh, with heating and cooling and been able to provide them with a part or free service call. It feels good. This isn't the first time I've done this and I love it and I don't do it for gratification. I do it for, uh, I don't do it for you to go, oh, Tad's the greatest, blah, blah, blah. I do it because this person came out and said, man, that's amazing. And I feel like that giving back uh, is what we should do. And then also, you know, I'm paying it forward and it's going to come back to me and it's going to come back to you. So I encourage you to help somebody today. Uh, if you need training videos, I've got a playlist called HVAC training courses. Go check it out. I've got a bunch of courses. It's for level three members, but if you want to upgrade your skill level as an HVAC technician. Maybe you want to own your own company, know how to get customers, know how to sell jobs, do estimates. I've got all those videos for you guys, for my members. You requested it, so I gave it to you, and I hope you go check those out. Uh, if you want to support me, uh, definitely hit the like button, comment. Uh, go check out my new website, tattydigest.com. I've got a new website, I've got merch, that's the way you can support me if you want, but just hitting the like button is enough, or commenting is enough for me. Uh, but if you want to take your train to the next level, definitely do that. Uh, if you don't have a question, let me know who you are. Let me know where you're from. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.